Well, Rich Eisen show back with Steve Trevino talking about uh, his new special, Simple Man on Netflix, and talking about the family and everything that's going on, man. Very funny once again. You're talking about your wife, Captain Evil, talking about me being a girl dad, you're a girl dad, or whatever. And it's life. Uh, my daughters are 25 and 22 years old. Oh, so they're already grown. They're already, but they're still they're it, still taking money. Oh, from no, me. it doesn't stop. It, I mean, <laughs> but watching my wife, like the other day, I felt so bad because I go, Hey, pretty girl. And my wife turned around like I was talking to her. <laughs> and it was so awkward because I was like, uh, yeah, not you. Oh, <laughs> like I'm talking to my daughter. <laughs> you know, it's, how do you, how do you come back? Because, you know, you still got to give her a compliment or whatnot. But at the same time, it's like you're not giving her that compliment. But you, she still wants to hear. How long have you been married? So, we're, we're, uh, we're, well, we're going on 17 years 17 together. 17 years. Congratulations. Thank man. you. That's awesome. Uh, but I was that guy. Uh, we didn't, uh, we've only been married 10 of those 17 years. Okay. We lived in sin for seven years. Because uh, she'd be like, were well, you going to marry me? I'm like, you live here. Do you see any other women around? Right. It's you. We right. are married. You, uh, uh, Captain Evil, you call yes, her. Yes, Captain Evil. Because she's. She's evil, but she's also bougie. Okay. So you gotta, you know, you gotta put it together. Uh huh. She has superpowers. Right. Anytime I'm having fun, she senses it, <laughs> and then she'll come and, and ruin it. You know. I always tell guys like, if you find yourself comfortable in your living room, prepare yourself. Yeah, because you know it's coming. It's right? coming. It's coming. And, and then she speaks wife. Like my wife never tells you. It, like she'll go, are you thinking about going to the store? Mm -hmm. For those men who are not married, that is why for you're, you're going, going to, to the, the store. store. <laughs> Absolutely. You're like, just tell me, just tell me to go to the store. Right, right. You know, I took a TV out. To, I have a, I have a, uh, I call it Trevino Cantina, mm -hmm. and I needed another TV because, well, football season and baseball playoffs was on. Took a TV from our bedroom, and and I'm, you know, I drank a little. Okay, I'm about to go to bed, and my wife goes. Is the TV gonna stay outside? Oh. I go, tell me to go get it. Right. Tell me to go get it. Right. She goes, well, is it gonna stay there? Say go get it. <laughs> Just say, go. we're gonna have to buy, it's gonna get ruined. Say go get it. No, like, you're, you're, you know, you're supposed to read our minds, Steve. That's, well, no, that's what I mean, they yeah. speak wife. And I'm yeah. like, like, you know, for example, I might, my, my parents will come over and my wife's like, oh, I'm happy your parents are here. I'm like, well, maybe you should tell your face. Oh, wow. Maybe you should tell your face. She's got that tell resting face. you know, type yeah, yeah, of face. Well, yeah. Even her face speaks wife. Oh, wow. Like wow. she's saying one thing, but her face is like, that's not happening. So let you me know? ask you this question, man. Like uh, uh, 22 years of marriage for me uh, also. Um, but mine's, One woman? No, three combined. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's clarify. Let's, I was about to that's, congratulate that, him. That, that's, I'm like, in, that's in total. Let's not go too far. You know what I mean? Don't clap for that. Uh, at, this eight, point, at this point, maybe it's you. Yeah, it probably is me. You know, you know, I, mean, I would say the first two was me, and the, the third one was kind of like a toss-up. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's like J-Lo. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, J-Lo, well, honey, I think it's you. I try. A sure. for effort, yeah. even if the A stands for alimony. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. You know, alimony, the, okay. At the end, you know, this one, the last one didn't cost me anything like that. <laughs> but how, how, how does this go over in, in with your wife when you speak about your comedy and speak about her? Obviously, well, you're getting a check, so yeah, that, course, helps. that helps. <laughs> yeah, it buys Louis Vuitton, right? Uh, no, I mean, honestly, I, I'm very lucky. I, I have a, an amazing wife. Our life is based on sense, our sense of humor. We love to laugh. Uh, we did this together. And I think if you watch my special, you do see that I do love my wife. Mm -hmm. And I do admire her, and I'm not going anywhere. And I think that that's what's special about my comedy is that you know, I'm going to blow your mind here. I honestly thought that men were going to be my fans. I thought men are going to go, this guy, he talks about his wife and we have to go see him. 70% mm -hmm. of my audience on my, my social media is female. Wow. It's women that go, see, he deals with it. See, he's living with it. And he loves her. So, you know, I, I think ultimately when people watch my stuff, they go, oh, my God, this is really funny. He talks about his wife. But I'm also imitating her. Mm -hmm. And as you know, imitation is the it's biggest form of flattery. Absolutely. absolutely. So I think women admire that and they go, oh, here's a guy that loves his wife and imitates her and, and makes fun of her. And they see themselves in it, right? Because I put up a mirror. And I, I, in my comedy, I try to have heart. I talk about raising my kid mm -hmm. in Simple Man. I don't you know. You have kids and, yes. and you guys have kids. And, and you know, I talk about the things that are truly conversations with me and my wife. Mm -hmm. You know, how are we going to raise this rich kid? I'm rich now. And my kid, <laughs> like my kids at my house, I'm bored. I'm like, really, dude? You're bored? Yeah. 
you have a pool table you have a ping pong table you have a batting cage you have go-kart i'm like wow i'm gonna shoot you in the face can i be your kid we threw we threw rocks at each other no, yeah, right? yeah, like, that was, you know so so you know the struggles of, of raising these kids in the new world and you know i coach little league and my god these parents, I thought the the dads were gonna be the problem. Mm -hmm. It's the moms. It's the moms. Oh my God! There's always. What a, do they say to you? Well, they, well there's they manipulate. Okay. Right. Because we do travel baseball, which is basically rich people little league. That's all it is. <laughs> That's all it is. You know, your kid's not elite. You're check cleared. That's <laughs> that's what happened, right? But there's always this one mom that wants the eight best kids on that field, and her son. <laughs> and her son. You what know what she? I mean? And then I left Little League because there's these parents that they look at these kids and they think that their kid's going to be the next New York Yankee. And I'm like, are you not seeing what I'm seeing? Is there an approach? Is there hostility? Is it I like a, I'm the baking coach. your cookies? Or I don't come up to me. Why can't my son play first base? Have you seen your son? <laughs> We're throwing real baseballs and he's going to get hit in the face and die. So because I have to play him, I put him in right field so he can play with the flowers. <laughs> Like, I don't think Bryson is going to play baseball. Probably not. I mean, there's going to be balls in his life. There's just not going to be baseballs. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? You sure. did. It's good. Okay. It's all good. We we'll, bleep we'll, we'll clear this all. <laughs> no, no bleeping. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, once again, it's very relatable, man. Um, your wife, you, you make it a butt of a lot of your jokes. It, I'm, I just started comedy about nine months ago. Come on, and, Come and on I, for me. You heard him right yes, here. Yes, right? I love You heard him right here. I yes. will definitely do it. I'll take you up on that, man. Uh, I, but I had a girlfriend at, uh, before, when I first started, and she's always trying to help me write things. Does your wife actually help you write some of your jokes? She helps me write jokes by living life. <laughs> 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 she does things, and I'm like, ooh, okay. All right, yeah. I'm, that's coming. You know, yeah. We will be full argument, and then both of us will start laughing. Wow. You know, I don't know if you, you know the special Simple Man, <laughs> the Cabana story. Mm -hmm. I tell that story on stage. Exactly like it happened. Wow. Because That's that real was life. a real argument mm -hmm. that we were having, and then we just both, both busted out laughing because we're like, oh, my God. That's a bit. I I, I had you know? I started laughing when you started talking about the containers. Oh. My mom is a big container person. It's my life. Like I mean, like you buy containers to put. Take, <laughs> I'm not gonna give it away, but it's to to, to, to to buy something at the grocery store to pour it in the container, yeah. and you don't know what's in the container because it doesn't yeah, look. We, the same. we don't need nutritional facts. <laughs> we don't need to know when this thing's gonna. My wife will go buy a container. And she labeled it container to put containers inside of the container. <laughs> and this is supposed to be normal. I and not it. only that, in, my, in the back of my property, we have a giant container that holds containers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like my whole yeah. life is containers. You got the entire container store, the, the right? Whole, or in your own place. The whole container store is in my, and she loves it. Oh, my God, container store. Uh, Comedy has changed so much yes. over the years, man. Like, you know, and like you said, and you got a lot of people that come up to you and, and give you a lot of accolades, a lot of love, women do. Do you ever get any pushback from anybody these days because of, you know, I, how I do, sensitive people are? I, I do a little bit where, where, you know, people, actually that, that clip you showed, I got a little flat because people were like, oh, you know, oh, so you're just supposed to spoil women. Why don't you why don't you raise your daughter exactly the way you raise your son? And I'm like, well, I'm sorry. That's my opinion. Right. And I think that my daughter is different than my son, you know, mm -hmm. and but yeah, I mean, you, you catch flack all the time. And I have learned and I and I'm sure you guys in the media, I don't look at the comments anymore. To me, they're ghosts. Mm -hmm. They don't exist. They hide behind a keyboard. And I do it for the people that love it. You know, I always tell people I have, I have my family, I have my faith, and I have my fans, and I'm happy. And, and, and we're right. happy that you're doing it, man, because once again, you're six special. How, how do you know? Because I hear people all the time. I like, just, like I said, I just started the, doing, doing the comedy, and I hear comics all the time. I'm about to shoot a special. I'm like, well, maybe you should get five minutes of material first. Nowadays, their social media game is better than their stand-up game. Right. You know, when I was coming up, it was grinding it out at the comedy store. You know, on stage. I, I mean, I was doing ten shows a week. Mm -hmm. You know, and I didn't say no to stand up and I wasn't worried about being in a sitcom or a TV show or a headshot or a website. I was worried about being a good comedian. And nowadays it's the opposite. Right. Everybody's worried about their social media, headshot, website. Do I have an agent? Do I have a manager? And I, I did things old school, man. I, you know, I, I come from a blue collar family, mm -hmm. hardworking family. And I just I took a very blue collar approach.
to stand up. Is that why you, know? you think your comedy is still so pure, so good? Because once again, it's so relatable. You're not, like you just said, you don't listen to the masses. You just live your life and you're not worried about the outside, you know, um, maybe distractions of maybe. It. I, I, I try to be the, the best father I can be. Mm -hmm. I try to be the best uh, husband that I can be and the best comedian that I can be. I don't watch other stand ups ever because I don't want to be influenced. Mm -hmm. So I want to be my own brand and I want to walk on stage and, and talk about the things that I'm going through. You know, one of the bits we're doing now is I call it family picture day. Okay. You know, I tell people all the time, I go, you come to my house, you see a photograph of me and my family over the fireplace and you think to yourself, that's a happy family. Mm -hmm. Well, that day we were not. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I go through the day of doing family picture day and it, it's just the, taking the little things in your life and making them relatable and funny and, and people just, they gravitate towards it and they love it and I'm just going to keep doing that uh, forever. I don't... I don't bend to the masses. I don't do politics. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want you to come to my show, spend an hour with me and go, man, I forgot about everything. And I took a step back and realized that it's not that serious. It's not. The you know? best pieces of advice I've gotten so far is, uh, A, don't listen for the laughter. Sometimes your punchlines aren't going to hit. Obviously, I've... That's, that's come in handy a lot for me right. <laughs> early on because <laughs> the laughter's not there. Sure. And, and then B, just be your authentic, true self. That's it. Just like and, don't and you, try and, and live have anybody. An advantage and advantage, and because you're not a young man anymore. And, I'm not. Well, I, I hate to tell you, I hate to bring it to you, but, yeah. but you know, you, no. you we get these young cats that come in at 18, 19, in their 20s. They don't have anything to say, mm -hmm. right? They have nothing to say. I don't want to hear their opinion and. They're always doing the same jokes. Girls night out, you right, know. Right, right. Um, but when you have a real perspective of three marriages and kids and and your professional life and all the people you've met and all the things you've done, you really have a place to to draw from in your stand up. And if, as long as you draw from those real places, you really can't go wrong. You can't. Uh, so you say you're a little league coach. You're not coaching anymore. Uh, I am coaching. Uh, well, I you know I do jujitsu, so I coach my son in jujitsu. Oh, jujitsu, okay. And then Tuesday is travel baseball, so okay. I coach him in that. And then Wednesday is flag football. Wow. So, you, so you know, how do you keep up with everything? <laughs> it's as soon as I get home, it's go 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 go. But I'll tell you something. You know, since we are on a sports show, yeah. Some fun facts. Okay. Drew Brees' grandfather mm -hmm. was my dad's football coach. Drew. Oh wow, really? Yeah, okay. Coach okay. Akins. And if if you don't know who that man is. World War II hero. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in this little town. Our little stadium is named after Coach Aikens. Okay. Uh, Ray Aikens, and that was Drew Brees' grandfather. Awesome. So did you have skills little, yourself, you know, I, I, playing? <laughs> I, I recently got invited to the Steelers training camp, and uh, T.J. Watt and the team invited me. Uh -huh. And I had a moment where I was like, in junior high, I thought to myself, I think I'm going to play for the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> and then out there, I'm like, I had zero chance. Yeah, yeah. These men are huge. Well, you can play for the yeah. Cowboys now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you could. If, I, you know, if it sells tickets, Jerry will let me do yeah, it. Right? Exactly. I mean, you <laughs> might have a starting you position. You can Bernie's over there, Jerry. Oh, absolutely. You know? <laughs> um, also, you got a baseball tie, too. I'm a big Yankees fan. Jose uh, Trevino. Jose, that's your cousin. He's my, yeah, he's, he's a, uh, a cousin, and I'm so proud of him. And my favorite story about that is, you know, when he went to New York, they set him up with a stylist at Nordstrom, right? Okay. So he goes to Nordstrom and, and he meets with the lady to kind of get his measurements and the whole thing. And she goes, oh my God, Trevino. She goes, mine and my husband's favorite comedian is Steve Trevino. Wow. And Jose goes, yeah, well, that's my cousin. You want to FaceTime him? So then she goes, can I FaceTime my husband? Okay. And, and he's like, yeah. So she FaceTimes the husband. He FaceTimes me. You should have seen her husband's face. He goes, wait a minute, you're with Jose Trevino uh -huh. and Steve Trevino. And the woman goes, who's Jose? Oh, wow. And I, so ever since then, I told Jose, I'm always going to be more famous oh, than you. Oh, wow. Yeah. Forever. You probably are. I mean, he's a Yankee. Oh, well, now a big time. Yeah, that's why I know about him. But I know about you, man, because you're but, doing but he, great you things. Know, he, he had me do the, um, we did a charity event for Rendon. Mm -hmm. And I got to perform for the whole team. And I've become friends with Aaron Judge and Rizzo and, and the, you know, Verdugo, who, obviously left but you know just being around it my son he's an amazing little baseball player and he gets to be around these pros and we go to spring training and jose's just about the sweetest human 
you'll ever meet. So I'm, I'm proud to be around it. No, I believe you're the sweetest human in your family, bro. I mean, because uh, obviously outside of Captain Evil, but, you know, it just, <laughs> yeah, I think geez. you are. Uh, you are currently on your Good Life Tour, man. You got uh, dates coming up uh, on uh, Lawton, Oklahoma, San Jose, California, August 16th and 17th. We, we have dates. We, 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 yes. We have we, dates. Well, we I, I got I to gotta look at my schedule. Yeah, we, <laughs> once again, I'm opening for Steve Trevino. Well, if you haven't heard we got to put it on the radio Mike. show. We yeah. got to make job. sure that we film it. Yeah. And then we have that disaster I, on the show. Play it back. Come back. I'm going to open for Steve Trevino. We come back. We can just kind of dissect it. We can break down the film. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Portland, Texas, though. That's your home? Is that Portland, Texas. uh, There's not a VFW hall there, and and that's a shame. (laughs) Okay. So I'm actually raising money to build a VFW hall in my hometown. My dad, Vietnam veteran. Uh, My charity is H4H Helicopters for Heroes. In the past 12 years, we've raised over $4 million for veterans. Nice. Um, yes, thank you. Yep. Um, yep. So uh, we're always trying to do something. And my little town, it's a shame. There's so many great men and women who have served our nation out of Gregory, Portland, Texas. And my dad being one of them, Vietnam vet. And there's no VFW hall. So I'm going to build one. Awesome, man. Yep. That's great, man. Uh, congratulations thank on you. that. And uh, um, Best of luck with everything. You got a podcast as well with your wife. Steve and Captain Evil. Steve. It's, a, it's a weekly chronicle of our week. Yeah. Sometimes we argue, and uh, we've, been, we've argued before so bad that the producer goes, you know, maybe we shouldn't put that one out. And I go, that's exactly the one we need to yeah. put out. Because that's real. And it resonates. People don't yeah. realize how authentic that is. I, me and my wife, so I was married to a celebrity before, right? And, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. He knows the history. Okay. That's where the players play. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, um, the and so play. we did this uh, show called Black Love, and we had the biggest argument <laughs> right on Black Love. It's supposed to, to say, supposed to promote <laughs> Black Love, and the biggest argument happened Ever. like thirty <laughs> minutes before this, and we're sitting up there like, mm, mm, you know, don't there's no Black Love right <laughs> now. No <laughs> there's there is no love right now, and I think you could actually see it in some of the clips, or whatever. And there, yeah. oh, I'm googling it as soon and, as I leave here. It was crazy. The crazy thing about that is like we did that episode. So and was like, man, are we gonna make it before it airs? <laughs> like we, we didn't know it was gonna make it before it airs, man. But you know, so but it maybe, resonates because it's real. Like it's real. So no. you you're, you're real. You can say what you. You're a comedian. You can get away with a lot of stuff. Maybe I should just like joke. You know how some comedians can and, like use humor to actually say what they really want to well, say. Well, because but remember, in every joke, there's a little bit of truth. There is in every single joke. So you know, when I say the things I say on stage, it's real. It is real. Is it exaggerated? Yes, but it is definitely real and to be honest with you I, I truly believe that because me and my wife fight we have a better relationship obviously yeah. you know because you get it out and, yeah. and my wife you know she's a strong latina woman and she told me she's like i don't care what you do or what happens we're figuring this out i love that and we're not leaving and, and that's what it's so, about some people say you know i always tell people you know when i give relationship advice i give great relationship advice even though i don't listen to it myself i always say i will fight for you or fight for us, but I won't fight with you. Correct. And that's important. You got to fight for one another. So before you go, before I let you get out of here, man, because, you know, obviously the comedy thing is I'm trying to work that out. And then the marriage thing, just in case. <laughs> just <laughs> so, in case number I four mean, is you, on the you've horizon. Had three, you've had three uh, uh, practices. Yeah, three at practices this point, in. You know what I mean? Point, you know, so, yeah. so, some players don't, <laughs> until they get to their fourth team, it doesn't work out. You got to have the right fit. You know, it's got to be the right organization. Everything's got to work out. Give me some advice in, in both. Uh, in, any young comedian that might be out there for comedy and well, for So for marriage. comedy, you know, I tell all the young comedians, do it, do it, do it, do it. I mean, it takes, just like any sport or anything else, it, I mean, it takes practice. And I always tell young comedians they never want to host an open mic. And I go, you should host because then you get on stage multiple times versus one. Yeah. So it's just about repetition. It's about getting on stage over and over and over and over again and being able to overcome and go, oh, man, I, you know, I should have said this different. I got to get back on stage. Mm-hmm. So it's just a matter of, doing it over and over and being authentic and right. being real to yourself and and don't worry about the comedians in the back of the room because they don't buy comedy tickets that's true you know that's true. so worry about the audience and i guess the same thing when it comes to marriage i i, I shouldn't have said this <laughs> i was gonna say with, with marriage it's not practice but it's practice. <laughs> well let me try another one maybe that'll be different no it's you it's yeah. you it's me it's me i mean the, the one common denominator man good life tour uh simple man the comedy special on netflix make sure you check it out once again hilarious it is worth the hour uh and host of the podcast, Steve Trevino, and uh, Captain Evil. 
yes. alongside your wife, yes. beautiful wife Renee. This, that's not Renee, is it? Okay. Where, is there a picture? No, okay. no, no, that's, no. that's okay. the publicist. My, okay, oh, just okay. Yeah, right. She doesn't look Latina to me. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, oh, I, I know, you know, like some you know, people look different. You know what I'm saying? You never know. You never know. Oh, never no, know. my wife is finer than frog hair, which is part of the reason I put up with as much well, as hey, I do. That's how you stick around, man. Yeah, if she was ugly, there should be a different show. And she been with you for a long time, so you know. I don't know what kind of state it is, but the alimony is good. Anyways, cheaper to keep it. All right, Steve Trevino, man. Appreciate you, man. Join us here on the Rich Eisen Show. Very funny guy. Give it up for Steve Trevino, man. Awesome, man. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.